Electrofusion welding is a method of jointing polyethylene pipes using fittings with inbuilt heating elements. This video does not replace the need for formal training, but instead is to offer some practical best practice advice to ensure you achieve a successful long lasting weld. Cleanliness is crucial. Start by creating as clean and dry a welding environment as is practically possible. If you are working in the trench, consider using a ground sheet. Arrange your tools before you start work on the joint. Start by cleaning both inside and outside the section of pipe to be worked on, ensuring it is free from contamination such as dirt, moisture and grease. Check the pipe to be jointed and ensure that it is free from damage. The end is cut square and is not showing signs of ovality or regression. Attempting to carry out a joint without addressing these points will compromise the correct operation of the fitting. Hold the middle of the bagged fitting alongside the end of the pipe and mark the pipe approximately 20 mm past the end of the coupler. This is to ensure you scrape and prepare enough pipe. Take a suitable marker pen and mark the pipe with hatched markings. Choose your scraping tool and scrape the pipe carefully and evenly, ensuring that all the hatched markings have been removed by the scraper. The target amount to be removed is 0.2 mm of material. This is known as the oxide layer. Be careful to not touch the prepared pipe end, as natural oils present on your skin can contaminate and spoil a weld. Do not allow the prepared pipe end to come into contact with any moisture, dust or dirt. If contamination accidentally enters a prepared joint, it should be cleaned with an alcohol wipe or fluid with at least 90% alcohol content. Measure half of the length of the fitting and put an accurate insertion depth mark on the pipe. Take a fitting and carefully open the bag, but do not touch the inside of the fitting. Keep the fitting inside the bag and place over the prepared pipe end, ensuring that the pipe is inserted to the center stop depth mark applied earlier. Do not attempt a weld without fully inserting the pipe. The bag can be left over the open end of the fitting to give temporary protection. Repeat these steps for the second pipe. Remove the temporary bag and insert into the open end of the fitting. Use a suitable alignment clamp to hold the pipe steady and correctly aligned during welding. During the weld, there should be no excessive forces applied to the coupler and it should be able to rotate easily on the pipe. Remember, if it's a spinner, it's a winner. Do not attempt to use the coupler as an alignment tool. Cover any open pipe ends with end caps or bags to prevent contamination from wind or dust. Use a calibrated welding unit powered by a reliable, smooth waveform power supply. If you are using a generator, check that it has sufficient fuel. If you are using extension leads, ensure these are no longer than necessary and are sufficiently sized to carry the load required. Observe the fusion time on the fitting and initiate the weld following the instructions on the welder. Do not move the pipework or remove the alignment clamps until the specified cool time is complete. Inspect the weld quality carefully. Check that the pipe and fitting have not moved during the weld and that the fitting is still correctly positioned against the depth marks. Observe the fitting indicator pins. Evidence that these have risen indicates a healthy increase in melt pressure inside the joint. Above all, work safe and remember, a well-executed electrofusion joint will be as strong as the pipe itself.